Let's go back to working through the music a little bit. The front here, there's only two elements. There's a little piano uh, that almost sounds harpish, which might be fine just the way it is. And there's a beautiful flute, which to my ear could use a tiny bit of delay. There's a few different delays I use. Um, there's a brand new one, which I won't use for this, but I will show you, called the Slapper, uh, made by um, Cargo Cult. And what is so great about this is it's the first surround delay. It has eight taps, and you can pan them anywhere in a 5-1 environment. But let's not use that for this. I think for this, we're just going to use something that just feels like a little throw of a delay. Um, and let's create it using Echo Boy. Now, I could just call up a preset, but what, I'm, what I tend to do, as a lot of people do, is I will start with the, as Chris Lord Algie used to call it, the march, which is a quarter note on one side and a dotted eighth on the other side. Um, and uh, a little bit of feedback. And the nice, the reason I like the Echo Boy, for many reasons, is in the Echo Boy, you can cross balance the feedback mix so that I can have feedback from the right feeding back into the left and vice versa. And it makes for a very interesting kind of Bob Clearmount-ish, interesting feedback environment. If you ever listen to Let's Dance, you, you'll hear like a classic Bob Clearmount feedback delay. So that's got that nice little lilt to it. And I'm going to roll off some of the top of the delay and add a little saturation to the sound. Now that whole thing sounds a tiny bit dynamic for television for me. So I'm going to add a little bit of a compressor. And I'm going to use that Fab Filter C2 because it's just a tremendously good general compressor. So I'm going to cut it down a little bit. Now maybe a little bit of my Bricasti reverb. Oh, you hear how it adds all that warmth to it? All that nice mid lower mid range juice. Love that. So, here's an interesting trick for you. So, we have this dry thing here. We like keeping it dry. We like the reverb. I want to add a little depth to this. I want to do it, but I don't want it. I want it to be very subtle. So, how can I do that? Well, I have a couple of tricks for this. Before I hit the delay, I'm going to call up an instance of the uh, 2016 Stereo Room by Eventide. And I'm going to set it to 100% wet, but 100% in the front of the room. And it's not even going to sound like reverb. But if I take it off, play that again without it, it's like, oh my god. All the walls just went away. Just adds depth. How can I control that depth? Well, the interesting thing is I can literally take the front to rear knob, and if I want to move it back two feet, I just go more towards the rear. And that works till about 20%. After 20%, it sounds effective. 
But in this case, I don't even want that. I just want it to be in the room. There are lots of plugins to use. UAD has a beautiful um, uh, reverb that's based on Oceanway. That works too. But that sounds pretty great to me. The other way we do it, or I do it, is um, UAD has a really, really great emulation of the AMS, RMX. And uh, what I used to do back in the 80s when I was a record mixer is I would use the non-LIN program, program eight, as an insert. And uh, I would just mix in about 20% of it and keep it very, very short. Uh, even the preset is good. And then add a tiny bit of pre-delay to it. And it just adds a little bit of distance. But in this case, I prefer the 2016. So if I compare that to the rep, oh my God, I mean, it's like, It's amazing how nothing's really changing, yet everything's changing. 